Can't wait. Thanks a lot. Bye, Mr. Vincent. Just tell Carolyn I went to Newport after all. She'll understand. Say when they'd be back? No, they didn't say. Thanks, Virginia. How far do you think? About how long do you think you'll be? Oh, only a couple of minutes. We're picking someone up. Can I just leave it here? I'll be fine, miss. I'll bring him right out, Louise. Oh, Tom. 
to you. How did you happen to look here? You got tired of touring all the bars. You started to phone. The reasons, I'd say, you've been pretty worried. I've been pretty worried myself. Let's be sensible, boy. You can't solve your problem with that stuff. Then how can I solve my problem? You tell me. Yes, sir. What'll it be? Oh, thank you. We're leaving. I hate to have Louise see you like this. You kept her waiting long enough. You said it, Dad. I have kept her waiting long enough. Oh, let's face it. Carolyn isn't going to give me a divorce. We all know it. Can I ask a girl like Louise to wait forever? You know I can't. As soon as she gets out of my life, the better. For her, I mean. Did you see Carolyn's attorney? Why do you think I'm sitting on this bar stool? Was Carolyn there too? No, I can't. Maybe it's a good thing she wasn't there. I'm gonna kick her teeth in. What did her attorney say? Same thing. Divorce on Carolyn's terms or no divorce at all. First thing in the morning, I'm going to hire private detectives to watch her day and night. We'll get something on that woman, even if we have to frame it ourselves. Now finish your drink and let's go. I'm not going. Why not? I'm going to sit right here and drink myself blotter. There's your car. The parking lot. No one will steal it. I locked it. I'm not afraid of anyone stealing it. I'm worried about you driving it. Give me your keys. Dad, I know what I'm doing. Do you? Wonder. Sandy.
Betty came back here, did she? Yes, she was here earlier. She seemed quite upset. What happened between you two? What did she tell you? Oh, nothing, but it was obvious that something had happened. She dropped by to pick up a few personal things. Said she wouldn't be back. That she was quitting her job. Wayne, if I can reach you, I'd like to talk to her privately. Why don't you run along? It's late. I'll call you tomorrow. She said earlier this morning that there'd been a bit of a mix-up about the art exhibit. Did you really drive all the way to Laguna, or where did you go? Wayne, I am well over 21, and you don't happen to be my husband. I see no reason why you should demand to know where I went. Well, I wasn't demanding. I, I was just wondering. And speaking of where I was, where were you? I thought you had to fly to San Francisco today for the paper. Carolyn, I've got some bad news for us. I won't be flying anywhere for the newspaper again. They found out about us. About us? What do you mean? About my using the column to foster a private enterprise. Very serious offense in the newspaper business. They dismissed me without notice. Oh, don't worry about that, dear. With your talent, you can easily get a column into some other paper. And then we can just go on as before. Why don't you try to start as that? They sell more papers anyhow. And if they sell more papers, we sell more paintings. No, you don't understand. I won't be able to write a column for any newspaper in the country, or any other type of publication for that matter. You mean you've been blacklisted? I'm afraid so. This really is serious. Without the help of your column, my sales are bound to drop. But I can still help you buy. Well, how much buying can I do if my sales drop off to nothing? We're retrenched, Carolyn. After all, we have one thing to be thankful for. We still have each other. But you have no job. What do you expect me to do, support you from now on? No, of course not. I can find some other work in another line, something not in the art field. Well, what else do you know except in the art field? What good are you to me if you work in some gas station? If I need my car washed, I can stop down at the corner. Good night, Wayne. I don't believe it. I lose my job, my career, my future in the art business, all for you, and now you throw me out. You never cared for me at all, did you? Let's not be silly, Wayne. If it's love I wanted, I'm still young enough. I don't have to settle for a man your age. Oh, don't be an old fool! I'm sorry. Come in. Could I speak to you alone, Mrs. Graham? Oh, yes, of course. Mr. Vincent was just leaving. Will you please be brief? It's late. Yes, I know it's late, but well, I saw your light, and it's most important that I talk to you. I'm sure you can guess why I'm here. To try and make you see that your present attitude isn't helping anyone, Mrs. Grant. Not even yourself. I'm quite able to look after myself, thank you. Must you take care of yourself at the expense of three lives? Your life? Hollows? And who's the third person? Your own. You're young, attractive. You have talent. Harlow's willing to make any kind of a reasonable settlement. I'm sure that with all that and your... I can free... take care of my own future in my own way. Good night. You'll regret this, Mrs. Grant. Am I to take that as a threat? Take it any way you like. talk about. There's everything to talk about. Now look, It's honey. no use, Dick. We're finished. Oh. Uh, so you're not even going to give me a chance to explain. What's there to explain? Everything. In the first place, that woman's not worth you and I breaking up over. Apparently you thought she was. Oh, please, Betty. That's not true. Isn't it? Listen, honey, I was going to take the boat out anyway today. When Carolyn invited herself along, I didn't have any... She didn't invite herself. You invited her. Now, where'd you get that idea? Carolyn. She called me not two minutes ago. And told you I invited her on the boat. She also told me you invited her for a weekend at the island. Of course, invited might not be the right word. Honey, that woman's an out-and-out -out liar. I didn't invite her any place. Do you expect me to believe that? Sure I do. Are you going to take her word against the word of the man you're engaged to marry? The man I was engaged to marry. Just leave, Dick, and please don't ever come back. Maybe there's still a chance for you to lure Carolyn on your boat again. And no doubt you can. I know Carolyn. Yeah, but apparently you don't know me. 
If I ever get her on that boat again, it's going to be for one purpose only. To shove her overboard right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Pictures, Lieutenant. I'll have to go out to the car and get some flash both. That's all right. We'll cover it. That'll be it, boys. Hello, this is Lieutenant Colton putting me through to Captain Hostetter homicide. Teddy, here's the score. Full names, Carolyn Ellenson Grant, age 29, married, but she hadn't been living with her husband for two years. They didn't get along together. Sure, I'll talk to the husband. Name's Harlow Grant, connected with some local chemical company. I got his home address from the man who found the body, Otto Peterson. He's a janitor here. A caretaker, sir. Oh, caretaker. And the IEO also gave me the address of a young woman named Betty Allen. Seems she worked for Mrs. Grant in the art business, but they had a disagreement. And Betty Allen quit her job. Sure, I'll talk to her. I sent Wells to pick them both up, the husband and the Allen girl. Just coming in, I'll call you back. 
Miss Allen, Trap, this is Lieutenant Colton. The sergeant says that she was murdered. You don't think it was a burglar? A burglar doesn't leave a handbag with $500 in it. To say nothing of the jewelry on the dresser upstairs and all this art down here. Then who do you suspect? We were hoping that you could help us. I don't think I can. What about you, Miss Allen? I'm afraid I can't help either. When did you last see Carolyn Grant? But, uh, about a week ago, she stopped by my house for cocktails. And you, Miss Allen? Yesterday morning. The caretaker says that you came around here and quit your job last night. I did come here in the early evening, but I didn't see Carolyn. She'd gone to Lagoon and she wasn't home yet. So I left. As I was leaving, I saw the caretaker and I told him I was quitting. Why were you quitting? To get married. Are you sure about that, Miss Allen? The caretaker said you were upset. You and Mrs. Grant didn't quarrel, did you? No, of course not. We were always the best of friends. Miss Allen, how long have you been engaged? About almost five months now. Don't you have an engagement ring? I do, but it's, it's at the jewelers now. I lost a small stone. I haven't told Dick about it yet. Mm-hmm. Mr. Grant. Your wife died shortly after 3 a.m. Her watch stopped. It broke when she fell down the stairs. Well, I thought she... You mean she was killed by a fall? She was killed by a gun. And we're going to have to ask both you and Miss Allen to prove where you were at 3 a.m. In other words, I have to produce a witness for that hour? Exactly. Where were you, Miss Allen? At my apartment. Alone? No. Dick was with me till um, almost four, and, and then he drove back to Newport. He lives in Newport? Yes, he lives on his boat, at Bailey's Boatyard. If we should have to talk to him, Miss Allen, I promise not to disclose the secret of your missing engagement ring. So you can trust us with his full name. What is it? Dick Sawyer. Richard Sawyer. I'm Wayne Vincent. I, I've been a friend of Mrs. Grant's for quite some time. This is quite a shock. I stopped by to see if she'd have breakfast with me, and I saw the police cars outside. The caretaker told me what had happened. When was the last time you saw Mrs. Grant? Last night. Where? Right here in this room. What time, Mr. Benson? Well, it was past 12, because I didn't get home until after 1. Did Mrs. Grant seem nervous, worried, upset about anything? Yes, she seemed quite upset. Upset about what? Well, I, I don't know, unless... Unless? A young woman came calling on Mrs. Grant just as I was leaving. Do you know who she was? Yes. Carolyn pointed her out to me one night in a cafe. Her name is Louise Nelson. She told me that Harlow Grant and Louise were keeping company. And where can we find Louise Nelson? 914 Longwood Avenue. All right, Sergeant. Lieutenant's upstairs. We'll talk to you in a few minutes, Miss Nelson. Find anything? I wish I could. Did you find that Nelson girl? Yeah, she's downstairs. And guess why she came calling on Carolyn Grant last night? It seems that Louise Nelson and Harlow Grant have been wanting to get married. But Mrs. Grant wouldn't go for the divorce. Except on her terms. What terms? Half of Grant's income plus $300,000 cash. He couldn't pay him? He wouldn't if he could. Let's talk to her. Miss Nelson, I understand you came here last night to ask Mrs. Grant to divorce her husband. Oh, yes. What time did you leave? Well, I don't remember the exact time. It was after midnight. She put me out almost as soon as I came in. Were you angry? That woman would make anyone angry, Lieutenant. She was greedy and vicious. Miss Nelson, do you own any kind of pistol, revolver, automatic? No. Why do you ask? How about you? Own any firearms? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I have a small collection of handguns. Early dueling pieces, derringers, things like that. Anything modern? Cartridge gun? Or on eggs, early automatics. 
Mr. Grant, did you come here yourself last night? No. I was in a place called the King's Tavern, getting myself plastered. Did a good job of it. Meaning that you stayed till closing time. And until I woke up in my car in the parking lot. About five o'clock this morning. Well, Mr. Grant, I'll have to ask you to come along with me. Where? King's Tavern. It'll be all right, Louise. I can use this. Thanks a lot, Sandy. All right, Mr. Grant, my pleasure. Mr. Grant says he left after you closed up. After that, he went out to the parking lot, fell asleep in his car till five in the morning. Can you verify that? Well, I can verify he left here a little after two. It's for the parking lot, how would I know? I leave right after I lock up. How about the parking attendant? Well, he goes home as soon as we close. Look, Lieutenant, I was in no condition to drive when I left here last night. So I went out in the car and slept it off. But nobody saw you between the hours of two and five. What kind of a mood was he in? Happy drunk, sleepy drunk, fighting drunk, what? Well, I... I guess you'd call it a bitter drunk. Seems this wife of his, this... Uh, Carolyn Grant, she wouldn't give him a divorce. Now, wait a minute. How do you know that? Well, he spent half the night bending my ear about it, Mr. Grant. Boy, I must have been drunk. I don't remember. Do you, by any chance, remember driving over to Carolyn Grant's studio at 3 a.m.? I, I told you before. I didn't drive anywhere last night. Where did he say he was going after he left? He didn't say. All he said was... Said what? <laughs> I guess he was kidding. Kidding about what? About getting rid of his wife. With a dull knife. Sandy, I, I might have said it, but I didn't mean it. Well, I know that, Mr. Grant. What else did he say? Well, when I, when I told him that no woman was with the man going to the gas chamber for him, he said, I'm not so sure. Maybe this one is worth it. Was his wife killed with a dull knife? With a gun. Let's get out and take a look at your collection, Mr. Grant. I may want to show it to a friend of mine downtown. He's quite a collector himself. Works for the police department. Bureau of Ballistics. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Now, call me again. Yeah. Now, what's the report from Ballistics? Carolyn Grant was killed with a 25 caliber automatic. German make, pocket Mauser. Finds a special cartridge. Very few of them in the country. Sounds sort of like a collector's item. I never owned a gun like that in my life. You could be telling the truth. How do we know? We haven't found the murder weapon yet. You still intend to hold me? Yes, for further questioning. You had a motive. You can't prove where you were at the time the crime was Homicide, Hostetter. Who? Say that again. Yeah. Well, we'll be over to the DA's office in a few minutes, thanks. Well, how do you like it? Somebody out there in the ante room wants to confess to the Carolyn Grant murder. Who is Nelson? No. Someone we never even thought of. His father. Well, that's ridiculous. He didn't do it. How do you know? We well, couldn't. You're released, Mr. Grant. We can't hold you for a crime that somebody else admits to. All right, sir. Come on, Grant. Wait a minute. Do you really believe that? And goodbye, Mr. Grant. Do you believe it? I doubt it. Maybe if we give Harlow Grant enough rope, he'll hang himself. Let's go to the DA's office. Harlow, there must be something we can do to help your father. Maybe there is. Do you think we can get into Carolyn's studio? And why not? The place is legally yours now. I mean, do you think the police will let us in? I think so. They turned the studio upside down. They finished about noon. I heard the police captain tell somebody it was all right to let the caretaker have his key back. I'll drive there, will you, honey? We'll ask the caretaker to let us in. Why? Well, for one reason, I want to dispose of Karen's personal belongings. For another, I think we ought to pack the art stuff and get it ready to move. Both of those reasons are honest enough. You've got to be good enough for the caretaker. What's your real reason for wanting to go there? Blind hope. I found you another box, Mr. Grant. 
Thanks, Otto. I don't think we'll need it. We packed all the art goods, and I'll put Mrs. Grant's coat in her luggage. I don't. Who else had a key to this door? I mean, other than Mrs. Franks. Well, me, of course. And then there was Betty Allen. Uh, she worked for Mrs. Grant. But she quit her job over the weekend. Didn't she turn in her key? Not to me, she didn't. Well, does anybody else have a key? Not that I know of. Well, what about Mrs. Grant's business partner? Didn't he have a key? Well, Mrs. Vincent? No, no, Mrs. Grant always let him in. Oh, Betty Allen. He only came around when they were here. Where can I find Betty Allen now? Where did she live, you mean? I don't know. She had an apartment on the same street with Mr. Vincent. He used to drive her home sometimes, uh, before she bought a car. Maybe I can get her address from Mr. Vincent. Do you know where he lives? Yes, the Las Flores apartments on the corner of Highland and the Holly Terrace. Thanks, Otto. We'll call you if we need anything further. Always glad to be of any help. You know, my blind hope gets better every minute. Honey, run up in Carol's room and close the door. What for, dear? Never mind, run along.
Please see you tomorrow, Miss Allen. Well, I, I was expecting somebody. All right. I, uh, I see you haven't gotten your engagement ring back from the jewelers yet. That is the story you told the police, isn't it? Just what are you trying to imply? That your ring never went to the jewelers at all. That you put it in an envelope, gave it to the girl at Bailey's boat yard, asked her to give it to Dick Sawyer when he returned from his little fishing trip with Carolyn. Are there any other lies you care to accuse me of, Mr. Grant? Lots more. You said that you had no quarrel with Carolyn. That was the biggest lie of all. You quarreled with her over this fellow Dick Sawyer. She broke up your engagement with him. That's why you quit your job. That's why you killed Carolyn. I what? You've been caught in your own lies and you know it. It's about time you started telling the truth. You did kill Carolyn, didn't you? Take your hands off her. Dick. So you're both in on the murder. Say, honey, who is this joker? What's he talking about? Harlow Grant. He's her husband. He somehow found out I lied to the police. Well, then why not start telling the truth? Well, that's what I advised her. I guess I was afraid to admit I lied. Will they prosecute me for it? Well, I don't know, honey, but being prosecuted for lying isn't nearly as bad as being prosecuted for murder. Then she admits that she was lying. But not for herself. For me, she thought I killed Karen. Oh, not really, Dick, but I did know you left your man enough to do something. I tried to stop you. I talked to her on the phone from Newport a couple hours ago. We got the whole mess straightened out. And I can prove that I was back in Newport before 3 a.m. Then if neither of you killed Carolyn, who did? Well, how do we know? You by chance know if any of Carolyn's friends or enemies owned a 25 automatic... Do you mean one of those little German guns? Or a Mauser? What makes you think I meant a Mauser? I guess because the only automatic pistol I ever saw happened to be a Mauser. Wayne Vincent gave one to Carolyn for a present. Then Carolyn could have been killed with her own gun. Did she give it to anyone, loan it? I don't think so. It was still there yesterday when I cleaned up the desk. She kept it in the desk? In the top middle drawer. Did you tell the police that Carolyn owned a 25 automatic? They didn't ask me if Carolyn owned a gun. They only asked if I owned one. And I don't. And if Carolyn were killed with her own gun, whoever killed her knew where that gun was kept. Now, don't start accusing Betty. Other people might have known where that gun was kept. That's quite possible. The police will be interested in two facts. Betty knew where the gun was. She has a key to the studio. I, I don't have a key. I did have, but I left it there when I quit. You left it with the caretaker? No, I left it with Wayne Vincent. He stayed at the studio yesterday while Carolyn was supposed to be in Laguna. Then Wayne Vincent had a key last night. He had your key. I guess so, unless he gave it to Carolyn or to the caretaker. Did Vincent know where Carolyn kept the gun? I suppose so. He used the desk quite often. Wayne Vincent had a key. He also had access to the gun. Can you think of any reason why he might want to kill Carolyn? Not unless she messed up his life. Like she almost messed up ours. Well, thanks for everything. Thanks a lot. there was anyone here. You scared me. You scared me? I thought I'd locked the door. Oh, you did lock it. But as Mrs. Grant's business partner, I have a key, too. A few of these artworks happen to be my own, and I just dropped by to pick them up. I'm not stealing anything, I assure you. Am I stealing these? I, uh, Mr. Grant asked me to gather up his wife's things. Well, I, uh, I hope I didn't disturb you. I'll just take a few minutes, and then I'll go. You're not disturbing me in the least. If you uh, don't mind, I'll... I'll go on with my job. Mr. Grant's calling for me in just a few minutes.
Could you get me the police department, please? This might be an emergency. Hello. Hello. Would you connect me with either Captain Hostetter or Lieutenant Colton? Right away, please. Hello? Hello. Yes, Hostetter, please. steps like she did.